again We came to battle, came to fight Yeah, we came to win Wings up, we're making our ascent To the clouds with the sound Like a roaring lion Feels like, it feels like Our time is now It feels like, it feels like We were born to be champions Like the kings and the queens of the human race The clock is ticking, there's no time to waste Gotta hustle, flex some muscle, leaving dirt in their face Feels like, it feels like we're taking the crown It feels like, it feels like We were born to be champions What's up, team? What's going on? Hey. Howdy. Hello. How you doing? It's a Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I love Wednesday winners. You know, there's a lot of people that hop on Wednesday winners because uh, they can't hop on our team call. Or they can't do different live dials or things like that because y'all have full-time jobs and We've got to work around your schedules and things like that. So I love that the managers get to kind of round robin this and get people together. But we got a treat for y'all tonight. First and foremost, we used to do calls. And I don't know if you could search them anymore, Jared. Like, can you search Seller Be Sold series in Workplace? Oh, oh, you might be able to still. I haven't done it. I haven't done it in a while. So before we started doing Zoom dials like or zoom calls and zoom training we always uh did everything by a conference call kind of like our friday call but everything we did was conference call it's kind of crazy to think about that right now uh you know how much we have evolved you know as a company in general but that's how we did it and everybody dialed into our national call we had hundreds of people dialing into our national call and we're just doing conference calls right and we used to do a series once a month, I think we kind of did it. It was called Seller Be Sold. And, you know, after, if y'all have ever read Grant Cardone books or, or paid attention to Grant Cardone in general, he's got a book called Seller Be Sold. So we kind of modeled it after the idea of understanding sell or be sold. You're either selling to your client and making sure that they are being protected and serving the right way, or they are selling you on why they don't need to be. Truth. Right. And that's the premises of of this conversation right now, you know, of what we're getting ready to do. But before we get into it, I wanted to, to bring to your attention. I know some agents are fired up about it, um, about Transamerica right now. Some of you are like, wait a second. Why are you fired up about Transamerica? Number one, they got a great product. Uh, number number two, they have been slacking on <laughs> on underwriting and customer service. But we got to fix. We got, we got, we've been working on some stuff. And uh, I appreciate Kim Glass. I appreciate Jared Leifert, you know, jumping on things like this with us. And uh, someone else brought up another name to me. Um, I don't know who it was. Oh, it was Kim. Kim so Kim, Kim Noretto, our VP, you know, she brought up. So we've got two contacts now at Transamerica that we can deal with uh, on top of, you know, what Jared found and things like that. But first and foremost, 
they just rolled out a new product. If you didn't see the email on that new product, this new product is bad to the bone. It is similar like Mutual of Omaha's living promise, such as it's level and graded. You know, right now we have immediate solutions with graded, standard, and preferred. So three levels on it. But with Transamerica, what is the product called, Jared? Do you know? We're late. Express Solutions. Express. Express Solutions. Express Solutions. Why do they call it Express Solutions? Why? The, the, the um, underwriting is immediate. The signature process is way easier way easier god <laughs> right finally like some finally we are, are finally. like man i can't get my client to sign this transamerica app what do i do <laughs> right we get it we understand you know but and transamerica finally listened they should have listened all around and like changed all the signature processes but it's i pipeline when it comes to immediate solutions so express solutions is not i pipeline they have Correct. their own process and they're and they make it easier for the process and uh, the underwriting is pretty cool all around. Um, Jared, what are your highlights on that product? So highlights on the product are with Transamerica Immediate Solutions. If you have more than one comorbidity, meaning if you check more than one of those boxes, it's going to go to a graded policy. Before this, the only thing that we had that was similar to this, Aaron, was uh forester's plan right and plan right in that section three you could mark every single one of those things yes and it would still be a standard rate right that's how it is now with the express solutions you can have multiple comorbidities if they're not related it's going to stay a standard rate and which is the immediate coverage and immediate coverage exactly yes no waiting period they've yeah. got some cool um transitions like you know they've they've really lightened up on their guidelines regardless on their fe products right you know it, it's kind of next to none there's people who cannot compete with transamerica on they their cover congestive heart failure with an immediate benefit yeah you could have a heart attack yesterday <laughs> exactly you could have a heart attack yesterday and still and get, get a level product like it's kind of crazy what they've done and nobody else can compete with them when it comes to inside a year right nobody so mm -hmm. we've got we've got a lot of leverage and we're able to cover a lot of people with that, um, with the underwriting. So I suggest, man, you guys can go back through maybe people that you had to put through guaranteed issue, go back through price check them, you know, and, and find out if there's something that we could help them with. Also putting a highlight on, and I know the Alvarez agency is working on this for me, uh, cancer, heart attack, stroke, Kim, I've been saying a date range all day long, and I don't know if I'm right or not. Is it 68 to 71 that's guaranteed issue? It is. There's absolutely, this is best for the hospital indemnity that it is age 64 and a half to 68. That's that there's absolutely zero health questions. Only on the hospital identity, but the cancer stroke heart attack still has underwriting. Yes. Got it. There it is. You heard it from Kim. She studies this stuff. Kim's kind of locked like me, you know, back in the day, like I was, I knew about every product. Art said, he said this. He was like, Aaron, the bigger you get, you're going to forget stuff. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that to me. He was like, you'll see. I was like, okay, man. Because <laughs> I, I literally, like, I, I prided myself on knowing everything about everything about every product that was possibly out there. And, and a lot of the agents now are that way. Like I know Lake is. Lake will go study that thing like up and down, left, right, flip it over, know it, like what's going on with it. Kim's the same way. Uh, so I appreciate agents who are, taking my place in that manner <laughs> right i really i really do so on top of that um we've got a liaison if you guys have trouble with transamerica underwriting if you got trouble with their customer service and we're going to put out a line to each and every one of you uh that you guys can access because we've called transamerica and they they put us in the philippines <laughs> y'all anybody had that problem yet? oh yeah oh yeah right well, we, we have complained. <laughs> so I did we've too. Got, we've got a direct line now. Um, and y'all can't give this out to any of your friends and any other companies. Cause this is our TLG line. This is for us. This ain't for nobody else. We've got access to a customer service line and we have to give them a code and we will be transferred and processed to someone right here. Someone competent that departments are speaking together. Y'all cool with that? 
it's great guys it, it'll really streamline your business yeah i'm excited about it uh, adrian can we hold questions to the end or yes yes yeah. certainly all right. all right cool um I'm, there it is boom bang done all right so seller be sold we have a lot of new faces on here y'all are hiring some people some people i just don't know i have no idea who you are hi i'm aaron how you doing so, I haven't met you yet. How you guys doing? Um, you are either selling or you are either being sold. The mindset of a successful producer, and we have a 30K call that happens every Friday, but understand the mindset of every successful producer we have is they have control. And you have to have control of attitude and activity. We have a specific system of what we do in starting agents out on tier one and understanding the investment of time, energy, and money, right? We could teach you and we, we want you to, as far as step one, all the brand new agents on here, everybody should know what step one is, except for you PA agents. And I got to keep saying it because there's a lot of PA agents coming on board. You know, if you're outside of PA, to get Mutual of Omaha, you have to write a paper app first and your upline will send you a paper app. We'll get you the quote tool. We'll teach you how to do that and get you moving on Mutual of Omaha's contract so you can start writing paper immediately. Heck, you can start writing on DocuSign paper immediately on all of their products, FE, Living Promise, Term Life Express, IULE, which DocuSign that, it's a little bit long, but yeah, all the Dental. other products. Would you say, like? Dental. Dental. De and dental. So we've got so many products with Mutual of Omaha that you can start immediately on with DocuSign. So some of you are like, I'm waiting on all my carriers. Stop. Stop waiting on all your carriers, except PA. PA, you got to wait on our carriers. <laughs> got to wait on somebody to say yes. Um, Foresters, all the carriers right now are taking roughly five to seven business days. So, so those of you that started on Friday and call me by Wednesday, you ain't there yet. <laughs> so you got to make sure that you're waiting five to seven business days. Insurance carriers don't work on the weekends. They're like, thanks. They're, they're not working on holidays. They ain't there after five. Some of them ain't there after three and they don't work on, they don't work on Saturday and Sunday. Right. So we, we have to act accordingly and, and set expectation when it comes to getting your writing numbers back. We will get them back. You're going to get emails. Don't miss them. Check your spam. Sometimes if your email is, uh, you know, getting spam. So just check on it. All right. Um, the mindset of a successful producer is being bold, right? There's a lot of confidence that has to come with uh, being successful and serving clients. We have to make sure that no matter what we do, we're always telling the truth. This is important to me to have an ethical organization. Like y'all are hearing it from my voice. Always tell the truth. Do not take shortcuts. You take shortcuts and I promise you those shortcuts will come right around. <laughs> Come right around and bite you. Do not take shortcuts. Always tell the truth and make sure that if you have a question of whether something is right or wrong, we got to upline. Check your upline, ask the questions, and let's make sure that everybody's doing the right thing at all times. That's important to me. I know it's important to Nelson, Jared, Mark, you know, Lake, Josh. It's important to all of us. It's important to Art. It's important to Kim that everybody's doing the right things at all times. All right. But understanding what that means to tell the truth in the house, guys, it's okay to talk to your clients like you would talk to your father, like you would talk to your mother, like you would talk to your brothers, your sisters, your children, your uncles, your family. You know, it's okay to tell people the truth in the house when they're being stubborn on procrastination, right? We don't have a crystal ball when it comes to insurance of what's going to happen tomorrow, do we? Sometimes we might have been the, the last line of defense in that house. And I've seen it happen many times. Aaron, that doesn't happen. I've seen it happen many, 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 many times over to where sometimes we were the last line of defense and thank God we did, or God bless us, it didn't happen as far as serving that client, right? But if we do everything within our power at all times to make sure that you are... Um, locked in and serving that client with the right mindset, then guys, you can't be upset if the client still pushes you away and says no. Does that make sense, y'all? So we're going to get into 
a lot of objection handling. We're going to get into some mindset. We're going to go for about 30 minutes. We'll take some questions. If we go over a little bit, that's okay. You know, I, we're recording this and this is going to be a part of our standard training process because we have some professionals on right now. So we've got to be our best at what we do. I've got on with me as far as a panelist. I've got Mark Spear, $60,000 a month producer. Already, Mark, what are you at? 15,000 so far this month? Nine days in? Sitting at 15,000 in production. But I want to be a 20K producer. He's sitting at 15,000 nine days in. Time to go to work, baby. Uh, Van Barnett. Van, 40K a month producer, man. For the longest time, this dude ran 20,000. Average, actually. Like, I know I say 20, but it was average of $30,000 a month for six years straight. Not six months, six years straight. And still crushing it. Van's been with me a very, very long time and understands this business. Van, you know, it's cool when you hire people. Like it gets to a point where you've kind of given them all that you can give <laughs> as far as production of what you can do and training. And now we're just friends hanging out and celebrating every win. There you go. That's what I love. What we, that's, that's this business. You know, I love making friends of this business and Van asked me a ton of questions over and over and over and over and over and over. And finally he was like, I got this baby. Let's go. <laughs> and, and just getting it done. Like that's, that's who Van is. Van don't call me a whole lot for anything other than be like, got some for you. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you know, and out there just, just hanging out with his family and serving. So Van Barnett, uh, Lake Savage, Bella Vance, 30 or nope, 40 K producer diamond partner, Lake Savage been with us for five years. You know, just reminiscing on that. You know, a lot of agents who have been around Lake serves as agent mentor. Lake is on his way to regional manager you know, being led by Mr. Nelson Alvarez himself. And uh, it's exciting to have uh, agents like Lake on the team that, again, he's just a doer, y'all. Lake is a Lake is, Lake is is a river. We were just talking about Jamie Underwood. I don't know if she's on here, but we were talking about Jamie Underwood as a new agent being a river. I will take a hundred rivers. Jamie, that is you. Lake is a river. He is not stand still, man. Like, so he gets it done. <laughs> Uh, how about Jared Leifert, 50K partner, EDC, Jared Leifert, uh, district manager, going back up to regional, then on to VP, panelist on here to uh, to go over objections with us. And then last but definitely not least, and one of my favorites, where you at, Diane Crump? Diane. I'm right here. Ah, there you are. Hey, Diane. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Diane Crump is one of the newest out of this bunch uh, started with us last year, again, hired by Nelson and came from part-time. See, this is, this is why I love this story came from, and Mark did the same thing, uh, but I'm, I'm done highlighting Mark. I'm highlighting Diane. So it's Mar it, Diane came from part-time and I'm talking about teachers don't make that much. Do they Diane Crump? They just no, don't. They don't. You know, teachers yeah. make, you know, what is it? 30 to 50,000 a year on average. And I don't even know what North Carolina pays. Starting you know, as a teacher they, this year, it's 30,000, Aaron. Yeah. They're about Michaela, to finally up it to 40, but it's not much. So, so I hope that Diane Crump's story inspires you of coming into this business and then just grinding it out part time, putting her 20 plus hours a weekend. She did even part time. And she was able to replace that job and come on full-time with us and start to build her business. Because I don't think you can really attack your dreams with a settlement job. You agree, Diane? Yeah, I would never have gone anywhere. I would have been struggling until I was 80 years old, still going oh. to school teaching. <laughs> well, Diane Crump is a 30K platinum partner with us. She is a smidgen away from district manager and I'm cheering her on every day to get it. And I'm excited to have her on here as a panelist and a partner. And she's one of my favorite agents on this team. So let's get this game started. Y'all ready? Ready. All right. All right. So understanding um, how to avoid objections and, you know, preemptive strikes. You know, there's a lot that we teach, you know, when it comes to, getting people started, right? We, we, we do phone script and, and that's where everything starts. We'll make sure we get leads, right? Whether it's mortgage protection, whether it's social media leads, whether it's um, dental life transfers, you know, we have specific 
uh, phone scripts and specific ways that we say things in order to avoid objections. You know, it's important that agents aren't trying to reinvent the wheel. Like we got this thing down, Adam, like we got it down, bro. Like we know we say what we say, we say it with emphasis and we say the exact word for reason. And Nelson is real tight on this, you know, I know him. So, you know, and there's reason for that. It's like, well, it, it either everything matters or nothing matters at all. And I understand that mentality. Like I really do. So we have to make sure that you guys are, are studying the phone script and getting the, you know, getting the first part down, but we can, we can teach you and you can get it perfectly right. But sometimes we still can't control how the client reacts. We can't because they're people, you know, so we have objection handling techniques. So let's start first and foremost, <laughs> let's start with phone script objection techniques. You guys get them on the phone. And uh, Mark, they say, we already took it out. We already got it, man. There's no need for anything else. Awesome. That's great. I'm glad to see that you got something. You understand the importance of this. Um, just so I can go ahead and mark your file closed here. Uh, do you have, um, <laughs> just so I can go ahead and mark your file closed. Do you know if you got the new kind or the old? And what I mean by that is, do you know if you don't pass away in the next 30 years that you get all your money back? or if you come down with cancer, stroke, or heart attack, that you yourself will have early access to that policy? I love that. See, sometimes you guys will only remember the first part and we use insurance terms as in, you know, we, we say we got the old rather than the new kind as such as in cash value or living benefits. I've heard, I've heard new agents say that. It's like, well, how, do you, how, how does your client know what that is? <laughs> It's like, like they didn't get their insurance license. They're not studying products. They're just answering the phone, you know, to someone they kind of weren't expecting, especially if you're calling tier ones. So you start throwing out language that they don't understand. You lost them. Diane, how do you handle that? Handle what? What's the question? The same objection. We already oh, took it out. Objection. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you got that taken care of. So let me ask you a quick question so I can take you off our call list. When you got that new coverage, did you get the new kind, which I hope you did, or did you get the old kind? Now, I don't go into explaining it until they ask me. Now, they ask me to continue talking when they say, well, what's the difference? Then I'll tell them, well, the new kind, if you have a heart attack or stroke and survive, or if you got sick or hurt, are you able to access those benefits? Or at the end of that term, are you able to get all of your money back? Or did you get the old kind, like your work insurance, where if you die, your beneficiary gets the money? I love that. But Jared, yeah, I, took, I took it out like two months ago, Jared. Oh, my gosh. I am I so thankful you didn't wait on us to get I this. Def I definitely got the new kind, though. I took it out yeah. like it's only been two months, so it has to be the new kind, right? Uh, I don't know, man. So if, if you got the new kind... Do you know that if you got cancer, but you lived, would that policy help pay your home off? Um, I, 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 I think so. Okay, let me ask you this. If you live for the next 30 years, you pay that home off and you never, you're still alive and kicking at the end. Are you going to get back all the money because you didn't use the insurance? Wait a second. You say get back all the money? Yeah, man. Now, not all mortgage protection is created equal. It'd probably be worth five or 10 minutes of your time for us to just sit down and go over that policy you have. If it's everything you need, we're just going to leave you right where you are. But I know if there's something that I can do to either add some value or save you some money, particularly in this economy, that's going to be something you want to know about, right? I mean, I would. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Do you work or have any appointments later today or tomorrow? Um, No. None of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Van Barnett. Yes, sir. We changed our minds. You know, we, 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 we did fill that out. You know, it was a couple years ago, but you know, we changed our mind. Well, what were your thoughts at the time? Tell me what you were thinking at the time. Obviously you had an interest a couple of years ago. So tell me what you were thinking then. And then they tell me, and then, and I say, okay, well, have your financial needs changed? Do you owe less money on your house than you did then? Cause if you owe less money than you did, then it's going to cost less. If, if, if price was a problem, also, has your health changed in the last two years? At that point, I'm trying to get them to tell me maybe something has been a little spooky with their health, right? How about your wife? I'm not talking to um, 
I'm not talking to Mrs. Homeowner today. I'm talking to Mr. Homeowner. How is her health? I'm just at that point, I'm just getting them to tell me all the stuff that I want to know to get them to, to, to share with me what their current predicament is, you know, and, and, and the, the whole key for me on something like that is to keep them on the phone so they can see the, uh, the bumps in the highway. So if I have them on the phone, the best thing you can do is say, well, two years ago, we were dealing with COVID, right? Right. And you know, what we're dealing with this week, two hurricanes. Can you tell the future? I can't. You know, and, and you just bring up things that are unpredictable. And there's really not much more unpredictable than a pandemic followed two years later by two hurricanes, you know, here in North Carolina on the East Coast anyway. Right. You know, it's 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 good to stay current. Right. You know, like if you guys can hit them and connect with them on current events. I love that, Van. Hit and connect on current events, but bring it back to where their mindset was at when they filled out the form. That's phenomenal. Lake, same thing, man. Changed our mind. Hey, absolutely. I totally understand. Did you end up paying off your home, Aaron? Um, no. Okay, awesome. So was it the price? Did someone show you a price that was way too crazy that you had to kick them out? Yeah, I, I kind of remember we were a little bit low on funds back then. Um, yeah, man, it's, it was just a little bit out of our budget, like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Aaron, I actually work with 24 different carriers and have over 100 different products available. And what I do is I make sure that we help it fit your budget. If you could get if you could protect your wife from that hurricane coming, that might be an issue. And if you could afford it right now. Is that important to you? It is important. OK, great. Awesome. What time are you and your wife typically home from work tomorrow? Five o'clock. Perfect. Love it. Love it. All right. Um, to go right off that and let kind of hit it, you know, you will get people that we lead down the path with our questions of that someone show you something that was you know a little bit out of your budget or, you know, sometimes people will tell you they're not interested anymore because they showed them something and they tried to qualify and they didn't qualify. So now they think because we had a one trick pony in their house or on a zoom or on the phone with them that, they're not going to qualify for anything at all because they didn't qualify. Mark, what do you, what do you tell someone that, Hey, listen, you know, they're like, we're, we're, we're not in a position to be able to get the coverage. Like we don't qualify for that coverage. You know, listen, Aaron, you sound like the last 10 people that I helped. It's no obligation to you to sit down and see what I have. I, I have 20 carriers over 180 different plans. I'm going to do all the research for you to find a product that does fit your needs but ultimately it's gonna fit your budget. And you know what, like I said, it's no obligation to you sit down, go over the options. You and I will work together to look at something that's gonna fit your budget. And if it makes sense, we'll move forward. If it doesn't make sense, well, it was, it was a pleasure meeting you. That's how I work and you have a new friend. I love that. I love that. Diane Crump, just give me a quote. All I'm looking for is quotes. Can you just give me a quote? Yeah, I'd love to do that for you. Um, we we do work with over 20 different companies, so we're going to shop for you to find you the best one, and then we can get you the best, best price. price. That's what you want, right? That's, that I is echo, what I want, the best I price. I echoed, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, so why don't we get a little bit of information, and then I can go to work for you and find you the best price, and then when we get back together, I'll give you those options and then you can decide what fits into your budget. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time, Diane. You know, like if you could just um, email me, you know, a quote or something, if you just, you know, put together oh, something, yes. shoot me an email. I don't want to waste. Absolutely. I could do that for you, Aaron. Um, but I, like I said, I do work with 20 different companies and we'd probably have like a thousand pages. Um, have you studied for your life license? Um, because if you could go through all those and understand what they say, I'd want to hire you. We we are hiring right now. Um, but but it is a lot there. Um, why don't you let me make it easy for you and and I'll figure out that for you and then we can get together and talk about it. I, I love that. You know, there's a lot of people who will say send it through the mail or send it through the email. Hey, can you just mail me the quote or things like that? You know, we used, sometimes we used to use humor, Diane, and I would say, well, I don't fit in the mailbox, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lot of knowledge and you're right. Like if you could review this entire policy and this kind of goes with, you know, and we'll talk about this later with one-legged appointments, but if you could review this policy 
I'd hire you tomorrow. If you could understand the language, the in and outs, and the small print of everything this policy does do or doesn't do for your family, I would hire you tomorrow. But that's why you're looking for an insurance consultant, aren't you? <laughs> so, no, I, I love that. We don't fit through the mailbox and we definitely can't fly through the email. We can't do it. So that's good right there. Um, how about, Jared? Yeah, man. Called this lead, man, 20 times. I can't, they just never pick it up. They never pick up the phone, bro. What do I do? Like I've called this person over and over and over again. They don't ever pick up the phone. It's the voice. Right. It's them. It's Joey. I'm calling Joey on the lead. Joey's is Joey's voicemail. So first question, are you double, triple dialing them, Aaron? Oh, um, no. <laughs> no? Okay. So we always double and triple dial all of our leads. What that means is you call you let it ring. Nobody picks up. You hang up. You immediately call back. You're not doing that? No, I'm not doing that, but I'll start doing that now. You got to start doing that because it does a couple of things. When Think about it. When you get a call from a number that you don't recognize, what do you do? Um, I don't answer it specifically. There you go. These people are expecting our call. They know that they wanted the coverage. They just don't know when we're calling and what number we're calling from. Right. That so exactly. So then when we call back, you know, we, when you get a call, and nobody leaves a message. What do you think? Uh, I probably got a wrong number. Right. But when you call right back, they're like, this person's trying to get a hold of me and it creates urgency. So, Aaron, you would be surprised how many times I've tripled out somebody. Nobody answered. And then 15 minutes later, I get a call back from that number. And they say, hey, somebody just tried to get a hold of me from this number. Bam. Set the appointment. All right. All right. So but what you if you call to... them and they're they're upset, Jared? Like you've called them two times in a row. Heck, y'all. I So I used to have a, a pretty big office in Raleigh. And when I was in the field, I would be able to set 10, 15, 20 appointments on a Saturday. And I, I'd line up my... Sunday, my Monday and my Tuesday, because we were going in the field. So it wasn't uncommon for me to, to book all my appointments for the next three days on a Saturday morning. So people would fly all over the country just to hear me dial and set appointments. And it's the same scripts we teach you now, right? Like, except we were going in the house and we used to play games. Aaron, if you dial someone a couple times, will they answer? Sometimes no, but let's play a game. What number will they answer? Sometimes I got up to 15 times <laughs> <laughs> and they answered, were they upset? They could be, they could be. Absolutely. You call me 15 times in a row. I'm going to answer the phone kind of mad, <laughs> right? Jared, you call them two times in a row. What do you say? If they are like, why are you calling me? Who is this? Oh my gosh, Aaron, I am so thankful that you answered. We have been trying to get a hold of you. Uh, the reason we're trying to get a hold of you, it's about this form that you filled out and sent back to us. Might have been some time ago, but it was about paying off your home with Bank of America and the amount of $100,000 in case of death or disability. You remember filling that out, sending that back to us? Man, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about? Well, let me look here. Your birthday is April 15th, uh, 1985. You're five foot. 12, you're five foot 10, 185 pounds. You're a tobacco user. Is that you? That's me, bro. That is me. Perfect. And live at one, two, three Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. How you get my information? Perfect. Because you filled it out and sent it back to us. Okay. Uh, let me do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot it over to you right now. Okay. So I just shot that over to you. Uh, you got a picture of that yet? You remember filling that out? It's your handwriting, right? That is me. Perfect. Perfect. So right about the time that you filled that out and sent that back, you know, did you end up getting your mortgage protection taken care of? No, sir. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so thankful that we got a hold of you. Uh, you know, let me verify a little bit of this information. Go on. Something Boom. Boom. Any, any ones that I've missed, Mark, Van, Diane, Jared. I think we're like, can you call me back later? Can you call? Oh, this is a good one. Can you yeah. call, you know what, Jared, since you thought of it, I'm not going to give it to you. Van, you call him. <laughs> can you call me back later? Like you call him like, oh, I can't talk about this right now. Like I'm super busy. Can you call me back later? 
Sure, Aaron, I'd be glad to do that. Before I let you go, can I ask you one thing? I just want to make sure, do I have your birthday correct? You were born on January 2nd, 1942. Is that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you're five foot one and weigh 350 pounds. Is that right? It's a little overweight. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, point is what Jared did. When somebody says, call me back, I've got one question for you that turns into five. Right. And and we may not go through the whole process right now, Aaron, but if you'll give me a little bit of information, I can be ready for when we plan to talk. That's another way to handle that. Because you did tell me you were busy, right? I am busy. So I know about your smoking status. I know about your your love of Twinkies. I know about all of it. Um, I know about I know about your time serving in Korea. I got you, man. I'm gonna call you back tomorrow at noon. Is that good? Uh, but no noon's a little bit tied up. I'm gonna be at Pilates. I gotta lose okay. some money. I got you. <laughs> How about if I call you right before the price is right, whenever that is? <laughs> Two o'clock. Got it. Done. <laughs> but the point is, I'm setting a definite time. If they, if you sound like you really do want to go, nobody needs to go right then. And they got two minutes to tell me a little bit about them. And that one, that one question turns into five or ten questions. And the last question is, is it all right if I call you tomorrow at ten o'clock in the morning? And then you say yes. And then all of a sudden, you're not in that bag of you're not in a big hurry. And I didn't, I didn't come off like a jerk for tying you up on the phone. Love it. Love it. All right. On to sales presentation objections. All right. First and foremost, you set that meeting and it's um, 10 till you log on and boom, there's some excitement going on. Cause they log on too. y'all know you'll get excited when they start logging on. It's like, Oh, they showed up. Woo <laughs> <laughs> Mark. It's just Joey and Tina ain't there. Joey, what's going on, man? Where's Tina? Where's she at? Oh, I'm just kidding. I, I say, hey, Joey, what are you doing? Nice to virtually meet you. Um, we got Tina Tina joining us today? No, she's not here. She she couldn't make it. She got held up at the uh, salon. Oh, no. Okay, because like, so here's the thing. Carriers require us to go over because we're doing a policy on you to protect her. We're also looking at a policy on her to protect you. And I can't just you know, shout out quotes. I have to actually, carries require us to give it to the actual client because we have to verify identity number one. But also when it comes to beneficiary side, she's got to know what to do in the event that you pass away. But again, vice versa for you. So it'd be really more beneficial if we sit down all together. When's a good time that you'll both be home? I love it. Anybody else, Diane? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So oh, savage. yeah, just hey, John. Yeah. Hey, John. Awesome. How you doing? Great. Hey, where's your beautiful wife? Where is she? Where's she at? And then you just, you, I'm keeping it casual. That's the most important thing, right? We are professionals, but we're going to keep it casual. Like you, like you're meeting an old friend and say, Hey, great. Awesome. Well, Hey, I don't need, I don't need this. Like, um, I don't need her here because I am the one getting insurance. Hey, I totally understand that. But John, did you know that there's $1 billion of unclaimed life insurance in the world right now? he's like what yeah one billion you know why because a beneficiary wasn't involved in the process and a they don't know who it was and they can't find the policy so why don't we do this why don't we just reschedule when you guys are both together it'll take 15 minutes and um you know if you're the one making the decision she can be there for the first half and then i don't need her after that sound fair i love that i i love that like that is smoking. And that can go the same for she doesn't need to be here. I'm the decision maker. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what happens when they say that, Diane? She doesn't need to be here. I'm the decision maker or vice versa. He doesn't need to be here. I'm the decision maker. I totally understand that. Uh, you know, some in some households, that's how it works. And I agree. Um, and then I go into what Lake just said. It's like, but did you know? that there is $1 billion worth of money out there that was never claimed because the beneficiary did not know how to claim it. Um, so my company does require that we have you both here. So why don't we find another time when we know you're both going to be there? And that way we can make sure that you get to see the numbers, you'll be able to make the decision, but we want to make sure that your wife knows how she's going to access that if something happens to you. I love it. Go ahead, uh, That's yeah, fine for all of it, right? I wanted to jump in on that. So what I always do when they say that, it's a version of what Lake and uh, Diane just said, but I was like, oh my gosh, no. Okay, so let me ask you this. She's going to be your primary beneficiary, right? Yeah. 
Perfect. Well, if she's going to be your primary beneficiary, it's super important that she's here because there's a hundred billion dollars. So I always ask, is she going to be your primary beneficiary? Mm. Right. So I always lead in with that. And when they say yes, I was like, oh my gosh, well, it's super important that she's here. And this is why blah, 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 blah. Love it. Love it. All right. How about this one? You know, Mark, I used to be in sales myself. <laughs> Can you just skip all the, the, the hoo-ha and the presentation? Just get to the numbers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Aaron, there is a process that the carriers require us to do. I'm going to keep this as short as possible. I'm going to give you my, my, uh, the, my, my quick set, my, my quick presentation just for you. All right. So I'm going to do that. Do that for you, but there are some guidelines that I do have to follow the carrier requires, but I'm going to make it as fast as possible just for you, right? And then I'll just go right through my normal process. I love it. Van, same for you, man. You got someone that's just like, push, give me the numbers, Van. Like, I don't, I don't need to know about your 12 cats. You don't need to know about mine. Give me the numbers, Van. So, Aaron, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to get to the numbers as quickly as I can, but first, I need to ask a couple of questions just to make sure I can qualify you. Um, and then I start asking the qualifying questions, right? And if I get you to say, uh, yeah, I take um, blood pressure medicine. What is it that you take? And you start to answer and, and you can't remember it. And I go, is it amlodipine? Is it Lasartan? I start impressing them with my incredibly big brain. And they um, all of a sudden they forget that they're in a hurry. You know, and I said, what's your blood pressure reading? Do you sometimes forget to take your med medication? I start planting seeds of doubt that sometimes people do stupid stuff with their medicines. Right. All of a sudden, you're not in a hurry anymore. But I do tend to have quick meetings for that reason. Or maybe I'll get to the numbers a little bit without being specific. Sometimes I'll say, look, I'm not saying this is going to cost $100. I don't know yet because I have to find out what your situation is. If you, if you tell me that you're a smoker, you have a different price than a guy who is not a smoker. If you tell me you're taking insulin, you might have a different price than another guy. Hopefully, they all have pretty good help but they're appreciating that i'm angling them towards a lower price while they're being a pain in the butt i love that i love it um savage yeah same thing uh yeah man if you got it <laughs> all right awesome hey absolutely why don't i do this for you can i can i talk to you like i would my brother all right we're gonna skip all past that the crap stuff why don't we get to the meat and potatoes gonna get to the meat and potatoes because you wouldn't like buy a car without driving it, right? So let me educate you on how it's going to work so you know exactly what it is and the red tape, what it doesn't cover, because that's really what we want to know, right? If I'm running down the stairs with scissors pointing the wrong way and I trip, are they going to pay out? Okay, so I'll go over that real quick, and then we'll get to the numbers. Sound fair? Perfect. It's so, just about taking control, right? It is, man. It's, it's not getting taken out of your selling system. You're going to have people who they want to buy, but they don't want to be sold, right? They, they don't want to go through an entire sales presentation. Everybody wants to make a good decision, Holly. They want to make sure that they made the best decision for their family. So they put up guards, they put up walls in order to check you to make sure you're not sliding them in the direction that is not right and specific for them. And it's okay. You can break down the walls with authenticity with telling people the truth with meeting them where they are mirroring their 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 personality staying cool calm and collected i promise you if you get in a yelling match with someone who's yelling it ain't ending well no matter what <laughs> right right so you've got to make sure you just stay calm through the entire presentation and the end game is to protect that family you just have to gain their trust that's it it's all you're looking to do get them to like you and trust you up front diane Yes, we've, we've already got some coverage. You know, we've got our work policies. I don't really see the need for this. Okay. Well, when you filled out the form and send it in, you were concerned about this at the time and you already had that policy in place, right? That's a good point. Um, yeah. But, you know, I can see that, you know, we, we, we already have, you know, we've got $300,000 between the two of us at work. If, if one of us were to pass away, I can still afford the mortgage and, and, uh, you know, I, I, she would get to 300 grand, which would take care of it. That's you know, awesome. Away, I could afford it. That's awesome, Aaron. I'm glad you've got that coverage at work. 
you know, our, we do like to tell you that, you know, with work coverage, if you leave work or your job leaves you, um, are you able to keep that insurance still in place? Um, do you know if it'll be able to go with you? I've never looked into that. I don't, I don't you know. know. I don't you know, not so. not too long ago, you know, there was a lot of people that worked at Sears and they all had work insurance and she, Sears shut down. They had nothing. There was nothing they could do about it. They were starting over. So I, you know, work is great. It, it's like icing on the cake, right? It's great that you have it as long as you're there. But kind of like the company car, if you leave the work, you know, you lose the car, right? That's so right. work insurance is like that. And when you put that in place, that was for income replacement, right? Because if something happened to you, you want to make sure that your wife and kids had that money because they're no longer going to have your income. So it'll co cover the income replacement and your bare expenses. So now let me show you how we're going to take care of the home so that you can make sure they don't have to use all of that to cover, pay for that mortgage. I, I love what Diane did there. She assigned a purpose. You can get specific with income replacement. How much, on average, you told me, you make $50,000 a year, Joe, you have a $300,000 policy. So you just expect your wife to live, you know, the, at the same standard of living for just six years, right? Like you assigned a purpose to that 300 K and then current event again, see y'all can all Google Sears. Like Sears, they had the policy where they could take it with them and they were all a part of a group policy. But guess who's the owner? They just have certificates. When we talk about work policies, they get a certificate because they're part of a group. Sears, as the owner, dropped it. All of them gone. Some of these people were in their 70s and have health issues and can no longer get insurance again. But they depended on their work coverage. Guys, work insurance... It's not a it's not a bad thing, but it's just a benefit, right, Mark? I utilize my uh, my stepfather, you know, because he had work insurance, and that's all he had. When I became an agent, um, you know, four five years ago, uh, I talked to him about insurance, and no, I'm all set. I got it. You know, I'm all set. I got I got work insurance, and and I even said, you know, when you quit, get fired, or retire, it's gone. And now he's got stage four cancer. On his deathbed, don't know how long he has left, but he calls me up to say, "Can I get insurance now? Mm. I can get you twenty thousand. It costs you five hundred and fifty dollars a month." You know, it's stories like this, and we're we could have Mark do a um, I don't know if we're doing that podcast with Trey or not, or doing a Wednesday yes, winners, and we could just swap stories, you know, about what that means because you guys need to know the stories. Like maybe you have a personal story that you could talk about, uh, but if you don't. Get with your upline. We'll teach you stories that we've gained throughout our experience in this industry, whether through agents or personal, right? And you guys need to know how to develop emotion. Life insurance is emotion backed by logic. If we're running IUL, it is logic still backed by a little emotion. No matter what, y'all going to have to learn to emotionalize, men. Women get this part really easy. You know me. I wasn't. I hated people. When I first joined insurance, okay? I hated people. I'm from South Boston. I don't like people at all. I didn't like, I didn't like anybody. <laughs> he didn't even, he didn't even like me. He no, was like insurance. Like nah, bro. I, ain't doing that. I will tell you meeting after meeting, after meeting, after meeting the stories that I hear pull out the life situations that I've had. And man, I, I can connect with people so much, but I actually enjoy sitting down and having these meetings now. It's just, it's changed me. Yeah. I love that. Jared. Yeah, man, I wanted to tell you that I never get this objection. And it's the reason I never get this objection is because I head it off before it happens. That's what I wanted somebody to say. <laughs> I, I head it off before it happens. The best way to avoid an objection is to head it off before it happens by doing a financial analysis and getting that out of the way. Now, work policies, I learned this line from Danielle. And I love it when people tell me that they have a work policy. I was like, oh, yeah, most of my clients already have a work policy as well. And let them know 
my current clients have a work policy, but they also have a policy with me. So I've planted that seed in their head. But then I'm also going on to tell them, hey, you know, the great thing about a work policy is, you know, it's typically a benefit that you get just for working there or it's pennies on the dollar. I tell all my clients, take as much as you can. The downside, though, to that policy is, is that not a policy that you own? So if you ever left that job, either by your own choice or not by your own choice, it doesn't come with you. And that's why work insurance only pays out about 2% of the time in deaths. I love it. Jared. Yeah. You know, I really loved your presentation, man. You were really thorough. You're the financial analysis, all this. You are so good, man. I really appreciate you taking this time. Um, but I do have four other meetings lined up with some agents and I just want to make sure I respect their time too. And I'm going to go sit with them. So we're not going to do anything right now, but I need to sit with these four agents and I'll call you back in a week or two. Not a problem. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay. What do you expect to hear from those other presentations that I haven't already told you? Um, I, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe it's just respect. You know, I set those meetings and I'm an accountable person. You know, maybe I just need to, I probably won't like what they have to say, Jared. You know, I, I probably won't like it. You know, um, I really do like you, like you did a great job, but you know, I'm just going to meet with them. That's great. No, I, 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 I totally respect that. That's fine. Uh, hey, Aaron, can I talk to you? Like I would talk to my dad. Um, sure. Awesome. Kind of like brothers though, right? <laughs> I, more like brothers. Uh, well, let me ask you this, you know, when do you, know, when are you going to pass away? Do you know when you're going to pass away? I don't know. My dad. Is still alive, still kicking. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. You don't know? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you a story. I literally just had a death claim today. 48-year-old woman, perfectly healthy, has a three-year-old child at home. She passed away of an enlarged brain. They have no idea why it happened. Thankfully, she had the insurance in place. Because you can wait for a week, week and a half. And if I'm going to be honest with you, most people that tell me that never end up doing anything, just to be honest. Um, and the reason is it gets put on the back burner. We get busy. Life gets busy. And then all of a sudden, something happens. And you may not qualify for this, Aaron. So the last thing that you need, you seem like a really busy person. Are you a really busy person? I am extremely busy. Last thing you need is something else on your plate. So the first line of defense is even getting you qualified. I don't even know if I can get this for you. So what I would suggest is let's go ahead and get the approval process started to see if we can even get you approved. Sound like a plan? Okay, let's do that. Great. What's your middle initial? And that's exactly right. Like the way that Jared moved, number one, he brought it back to the emotion that we don't know what's happening tomorrow. And the fact is, we don't have you approved yet, but we could start the process. Heck, we could even say, listen, let's go ahead and start this. And you know what? If you if you sit down with somebody and they show you something different, but got to make sure it's apples to apples because you get a shady sales agent out there and there are shady sales agents. This is why I work so hard on our ethics within the company. Jared can show him a 30 year and an old boy goes, this is a 30 year, but gives him a 10 year price. Right. Right. So we have to make sure you say that. Listen, I, I, I don't know if they're going to show you, they're going to price shop you or, or tell you something that's not factual just to get the business. But I'm being confident and truthful with you. You can sit down with them if you choose, but let's go ahead and start the process now to lock in your insurability. And people I love that. Go ahead, Mark. Like you, there's three, you, you've told, taught me this in the beginning. There's three reasons people don't buy. Yeah. Right? They, they don't like you, they mm -hmm. don't understand the policy or they can't afford it. Right. Now, Aaron already stated too, Jared, that I liked you. I really I really get along. We vibe. You did a great presentation. So another tactic is to say, well, then is is it the price? You know, or is, is, it, the, is it the policy? Do you, did I answer all your questions properly? Is there anything that you need to know a little bit? No, you did a great job. You explained that. Okay, so what's the price? Now, you don't have to say that out loud because no guy wants to be called cheap in front of his wife. And no guy wants to say he's cheap in front of his wife. So the other tactic is to say, like, Jer like Jared said, we can get the approval process going, but why don't we do this? Why don't we put the basic in place? Why don't we start there? And That's then if right. we have 
We have 30 days to change it. All we got to do is get back together. You know, if, if it's after that, we can just fill out another application. We can we can raise it up. But let's start off with the basic, get the approval going. And I will tell you this right now. I have never had anybody call me back to up it. Yeah. They just they just didn't want to be cheap in front of their wife and say, well, I only think they're worth the, worth the basic. You know, uh, that's what I'll it means to that. serve that's clients. That's right. selling on strength and not commissions. Some of y'all trying to live and die on every single appointment that you sit with. And if you don't sell it, you are in detriment, mental instability because, and your clients can feel that if you're trying to pay your cell phone bill in the next two days and it's live or die on this sale, they know it and they ain't dying on your sword, homie. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, I will actually talk them out of the preferred, I'll show them preferred, right? Preferred, standard, basic. And I will say, listen, here's the preferred, here's the nice shiny penny, this is what everybody wants, but sometimes it just doesn't fit the budget. This is what a lot of our clients pick, which is the middle option, right? right? That's half the mortgage with half accidental, and then if you pass away of an accident, the whole mortgage is paid. And the basic, that's designed for mortgage payment protection. I'm thinking what makes sense, and especially after you do a financial analysis, like Jared said earlier, you're going to know whether they have the money to afford the preferred. So if they can't afford the preferred, don't focus on the preferred. Go with you, you know, the standard or the basic, and then let them decide. And I've had people say, you know, even though I've advised them on the basic, they'll stay, say, you know what? No, we're going to find a way. We'll take the standard or we'll take the preferred. Mm. I love it. There he is. Like, yeah. yeah, that sounds a little familiar. I wonder who taught you that stuff, Mark. No. <laughs> no. So um, one of the things that I do is, you know, like Jared was saying earlier, I love to handle objections up front in the very beginning, because if I can't, if I can't handle an objection in 10 minutes, then I'm going to end the call politely with them. Right. If if I'm going to ask him how important is it to you on a scale of one to ten, if it's anything less than the seven, I'm going to say, hey, we're going to reschedule yes. this. Um, you know, obviously it's not important. I don't want to waste your time because by the time you're ready, your prices are going to have changed. Uh, and there's just your health may be might be different. You might have developed diabetes or had a heart attack, and I don't know if I can get you qualified. So it's kind of a waste of time. So when this is more important, you guys can call me back. Then I'm going to go dial right after because now I have another 40 minutes to dial. And set two more in its place. But first of all, by handling the objection up front, I'm going to say, hey, guys, and this is what I learned from Nelson Alvarez. Hey, you know, if this was free, we'd already be done now, right? But we know it's not free. So we need to find that sweet spot between free and hell no per month, right? We don't want our wife making us sleep on the couch, okay? So if we can find that sweet spot, is there anything else that would hold you back from protecting each other? Maybe like talking to somebody, maybe uh, you have other insurance policies, anything like that hold you back. And if they say no, I'm clear to move forward. But at least I got that right there. So I, I kill two birds with one stone. Either I'm going to close it right then and there, or I'm no, I'm no, I'm not going to close it and I'm going to move on. I love it. I love it. All right. We're, it. Ra we're wrapping up here, wrapping up. And y'all know what the big dreaded objection is, right? Y'all know what the most the most received objection is you've gone through it and they say, I just need to think about it. You know, like, I, I, I like what you showed me, you know, I need to think this over me and the wife, you know, we're just going to talk this over. Um, Van, can, can you give us a couple days? You know, we're just going to think about this. Okay. I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do this with an actual response to that objection second, but I'm going to do the heading off your stupid objection. <laughs> with this the second i lay eyes on you aaron uh-huh before you get to anything after i i say hello i'm van aaron what's that behind you there i see is that a painting what's behind you uh yeah that's a painting what is that is that a bike is that a motorcycle that's a motorcycle you ride i used to what did you used to ride i rode a harley okay did you ride fast um no i got to the harley because i used to like to ride fast gotcha all right. Well, frankly, you were supposed to ask to ride. Damn it. Anyway. <laughs> but my point is, if I see something like that in your background, Aaron, anybody who is talking to Aaron Guterman about insurance, if the first question you ask isn't about that motorcycle, then you're doing a bad job. 
uh, because what I'm doing is I'm establishing rapport and I'm getting him to think about the ways he can die without saying, you know, you're going to die on that motorcycle, right, Aaron? I'm not going to say that. Okay. So the objection that I, the way I handle that objection is kind of old school. I need to think about it. At this point, I've handled or I've presented three prices on a typical mortgage protection. One's $100, one's $150, one's $200. And I'm going to say, Aaron, I understand you said you want to think about it. Let me ask you this. I've showed you 100, 150, and 200 for 100,000, 150,000, 200,000 insurance. Make it real simple. Which of those two are you trying to choose between? And if he tells me I've got him, because he's right. not that hard, you know, and I said, okay, I understand you're thinking about 100 and 150. I got common sense. 100 is a lot easier on you than 150. What do you think is best for you? He forgot he's thinking about anything. He's zeroing in between two numbers. Now, I'm not saying that there are no uh, golden keys to the kingdom here. But my point with that handling of that objection is I want him to think about the only thing he really cares about is wallet. That's why that's why he wants to think about it, because he doesn't want to spend any money right now. Well, I'm going to zero in on those two numbers that he's choosing between. Does it always work? No. That's why you move on to the next thing. One thing on that other objection about, uh, real quick, is uh, we, I hear, and I think everybody would agree, I hear I've already got it more than I hear I need to talk to the next guy. What does that tell you? Get to them first. By, absolutely get to them first. You paid for a lead. Call the lead the second you get it. I don't care what kind of lead it is. Do not wait. Right. You wait two days on a lead you've paid good money for. Maybe somebody else got there. Maybe they talked to a relative. Sometimes that happens. I've had people fill these leads out that I paid for and they talked to their cousin who sells insurance. Right. In the two days that I waited to call. So that's two, two, two answers. But wait, wait, Van, you know, I, I I'm talking to you. I definitely want to meet with you. But you set um, for you know tomorrow at two o'clock. I've got a meeting this afternoon at two o'clock. And then I'll, I'll we'll, we'll do our meeting, you know, as well at two o'clock tomorrow. You're talking to another agent at three o'clock today. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, you got a few minutes right now. Let me ask you a cool, real quick question. What's that behind you, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> tell me you ride and tell me you ride fast. <laughs> a, a, B, C, always be closing. That's, I mean, he ain't wrong, right? Move in for it. Yeah. Right. What I mean, you could, we could teach you guys how to do and, and drop the seed in their mind of, Hey, you know what? Go ahead and listen to them, but do me a favor. You know, they might show you something great, but I want, I want to be able to compare apples to apples. Don't sign anything. Tell them you got to think about it. Right. Like you go ahead and you use the ultimate objection against them and just drop it in their head right off the bat. Yeah. That way it gives you a shot to go back in. Does that make sense y'all? Yeah, you know what, Aaron? I yes, say sir. sometimes too. I say, "Hey, why don't you do this?" You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit different than Van, but um, if I can't get to them first, I'm saying, "Hey, okay, why don't you take notes?" And then what we'll do is we'll compare apples to apples. And if I find out they had a better product, I'll help you fill out that application. Okay. Then when I get to that appointment and I find out that they that the last agent showed them the same exact thing I'm showing them, right? I'm going to say, okay, well, hey, you know what? Who would you rather do business with? Well, that other guy was kind of pushy. We like you a little bit better. Why? Because I was likable. Right. I was likable. I explained it to them. And it's that's what like. We're, we're digressing. <laughs> we're digressing. We're still on Think About It. We digressed. We're past that. Diane Crump. Oh. oh. <laughs> Diane Crump. I want to think about it. That's great. Yep. I, I'm glad you want to think about it, Aaron. That means that you're serious about protecting your family. So let me ask you, what exactly are you want to think about? So normally it's either the carriers. Do you not like the carrier that we're going with? I was looking at Mutual of Omaha for you today. Do you like them? Yeah. You know, I know them. They're they're pretty great okay. carrier. They're a great company. They've been around a long time. Okay. So if it's not the carrier, then is it me? Um, okay. Did you not like me? Did you not feel the connection with me? No, you're if you, way too kind. I think if you're great. You don't Diane. like me. Okay. Cause I could find you another agent. Cause I don't want you not to protect your family just because we don't have a connection. Okay. So then if it's not that, then it must be the price. So, you know, I showed you three options there out of those three options, you know, which one of those just absolutely doesn't work for you. Let's just take that off the table. 
Okay, so is it preferred? Okay, let's just get rid of that one. So let's talk about the standard and the basic. So of those two, you know, what are your thoughts? Is the standard, does that feel like it might be a little bit tight on the budget? Because, you know, my thing's... A little bit, Diane, a little bit. A little bit, okay. So let's go with the basic, Aaron. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and get an approval on you so that we know we can get you covered? We'll go with the basic. And then if you decide you want to go up a little bit higher to the standard, we've got 20 days. We can put that in place, no problem. But at least this way, we'll know that you're approved, that you've got that coverage in place, and your family's taken care of. So what is your middle initial, Aaron? It's the Ooh. Name. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Mark, Mark, how you follow that, bro? How do you Mark, even follow that? Start off every meeting like this. Okay. That's my upline. Here you, go. <laughs> you, you see what's on this right here? Aaron, <laughs> it's your address. Remember, I know where you live. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's working, Scarface. No, it's not right. I know who I am. <laughs> Honestly, uh -oh. think about uh -oh. it getting taken care of at the uh -oh. beginning of the the whole meeting, too. And one of the things that I do to help alleviate, think about it at the end, number one is I tell them what we're going to do and I get an upfront contract. Okay, so basically, so you filled this out. This is why you filled this out. Great. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go over all this information to be sure it's correct. We're going to do a quick little financial analysis. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about mortgage protection and equity protection. I'm going to show you three different options for each of you. You guys are in control of the budget. Pick what works for you, and then we'll fill out a quick application to see if we can get you approved. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds good. That's already a soft close. I just told them we're filling out applications. Mm -hmm. So what, so what are you saying? No, 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 no. What are you, uh -huh. what are you saying is that every... What we're doing right now is we're handling objections for you guys. We're teaching you the, the appropriate way to handle the objection if you should get the objection. The point of the matter is to not get the objection, right? And that's to handle everything up front. So everything that, like for me, as a 60K producer, I learned everything from that guy, from that guy, from that girl, from that guy that is on your screen right now, but I incorporated it into my selling system in the beginning going from the introduction to the PowerPoint presentation, uh, you know, for, uh, financial analysis, all the way down to before I even show them the pricing, I am getting them to agree that we are going to work together to move forward, to put something in place to protect their family and fit their budget in multiple different scenarios through the presentation so that I don't get the, I need to think about it at the end, or, you know, I have work policy, or we already have coverage. <laughs> I've already identified all that stuff. So what we're doing is we're, right now is we're teaching you, if you get that objection, how to overcome it. But the goal is to not get it and incorporate everything that we're saying already into your presentation. Exactly right. Understanding. Standing. Sometimes these clients, especially spouses, get together before the meeting and they make a decision before you even meet with them that, hey, listen, we're just here for information. We're not going to do anything today. And they... They're going to throw some nice things at us. You know, they're, we're meeting with a sales guy. He's going to throw all kinds of stuff at us. And you guys are just already within their playbook of they're going to think about it no matter what. That's what they're coming back with. I'm going to give you all a line that has made me million dollars easy. Right. And usually if that's the playbook and they've gone through the whole process and you've got them to pick the number. Right. They've actually picked it like out of these three options, which one best fits your need, but most importantly, your budget line. Number one, well, this, this $74 here, the $74 a month, I think that's what we're going to go with, but you know what? We need a couple of days to think about this. There's two things that you can do here. Tell you what, this is what we call a Tom Brown ode to old TB. <laughs> right? I still Stop, do the meeting. Stop the meeting and we could just do a walk away. Hey, I'm going to give y'all before they even say a couple days, you guys can feel it coming. A lot of what we teach you, you guys are going to be able to feel 
with your client, you're going to be able to feel the, the, the appointment and you're going to be able to start connecting. Or if it's disconnecting, you're going to feel it the more experienced you get. So if you feel that, think about it coming or they say, well, you know, we just need to th tell you what I, I understand. Y'all need to think about this. I'm going to go ahead and place you on mute. I've got a couple calls. I'm going to go grab a drink of water. Y'all talk about it for 10 minutes. And when I come back, we'll talk about which option y'all went with. Boom. Assumption assumption right down to the T. And when you come back, you absolutely tell them that. All right. Y'all, y'all had, y'all had a couple 10 minutes, you know, talk to me about which one did you decide? And you can even go into the, you know, the price objection of eliminating two. You did pick this one. Now, now if it comes down to it, now we're going to throw the emotion right back at them. You know, I understand that you need to think about this. I guess there's only really a couple things you need to think about Adam Meyer. That's $74 a month. Is that really going to break your bank? You know, we kind of went over your financial analysis. You've got this much, you know, is that going to break the bank? Well, no. If you passed away tomorrow, the $150,000 check that we delivered to your wife, is that going to change her life? Where do I sign? It absolutely is. There's not a whole lot to really think about, is there? Why don't we go ahead and just remove the burden today and take care of the family now? And that's it. Guys, be exactly Jamie Underwood. If we could be truthful with people and say what we have to say, because here's here's your biggest lesson from the entire night. There's no be back bus. As soon as you leave that meeting, 99 point, Nelson will call me with that 0.1% every now and then. Mark will too. Be like, be like, <laughs> he does. like they'll call me when it happens because it's so rare. I'm not going to say 100% because there's never 100% of anything. Nothing is perfect, right? But I'm telling you, 99% of people, they aren't coming back. They gone. So you have to do everything you possibly can within that 30 minutes to 60 minutes to an hour and a half to two hours that you possibly can do to ensure that that family is protected today for the event that could happen tomorrow. We're in life insurance. You're not being nice or kind to let them think about it. That's exactly right. I want y'all to save your questions. I know we got questions. I want y'all to save your questions for the 30K mindset call. Write them Here, down. Y'all write a whole bunch of questions down right now that you have developed. I know we've raised some questions. There's no doubt in my mind. Number one, y'all can hear the command of subject matter. I did this on purpose to him. I told him I'm gonna prepare him for this meeting. Did I prepare you, Diane? No, sir. I know I didn't. And I did that purposely. I didn't prepare Van. I didn't prepare Mark. I didn't prepare any of them. I wanted them just to come at you with complete authenticity of knowledge that they've received over the last few years of being with us. Now, I don't want you to compare yourself to where they are right now. Every single one of them had a day one where they knew nothing. But I want you to see what you can grow to just by plugging in, staying engaged, communicating, listening, working, associating, and communicating with us consistently, daily to grow. So. I love y'all. I appreciate you panelists. I appreciate everybody plugging in. I Hopefully you've gained a lot of knowledge. You've gotten some experience, but it doesn't come from just one. Y'all keep showing up every single day. And I want to hear some questions fired at us on Friday. Take care, y'all. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron.